हेलो माय नेम इज हर्षोदन सूर्यकांत पाटील एंड आई एम फ्रॉम अन्ना सेम रंगी कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी आष्टा नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू सी द इलास्टिक रिबाउंड थ्योरी फ्रॉम द अर्थक्वेक अर्थक्वेक रेजिस्टेंस स्ट्रक्चर्स फर्स्ट वी विल सी व्हाट आर द कंटेंट्स ऑफ द प्रेजेंटेशन फर्स्ट वी विल सी व्हाट इज एन अर्थक्वेक देन द इलास्टिक रिबाउंड थ्योरी एंड द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ एन अर्थक्वेक व्हिच determine the magnitude of earthquake first is earthquake earthquake is any sudden shaking of the ground caused by the passage of seismic waves through earth's rock that is when any seismic wave travels through the earth's earth's crust then the sudden shaking takes place this is called an earthquake and during an earthquake strong shaking makes the ground move up and down and back and forth that means that during an earthquake the ground doesn't move only up and down but also back and forth it depends upon the type of wave that is a p waves h waves or a surface waves or according to the waves the motion of or movement of the ground takes place an earthquake can be generated due to several reasons such as volcanic eruption sudden dislocation of the segments of the earth and man made activities uh we think that the earthquake is generated generated due to only natural reason but can be also generated due to man made activities like mining tunneling blasting uh, also testing of uh, explosives or uh, at bombs which are used for as weapons volcanic eruptions mostly earthquakes due to volcanic eruption occur in the southeast uh, south pacific region and the countries like japan indonesia face this issue of volcanic eruption earthquake then is sudden dislocation of the segments of the earth as we know that uh, continents are located on the tectonic plates these plates keep moving due to this movement sudden movement the segment in the segment of the earth segment of the earth's tectonic plates there might be an earthquake next is the most important point that is a uh, elastic rebound theory over the course of time one can observe that the two sides of an active fault are in slow but continuous movement relative to one another this movement is known as fault slip means we can see that if what is a fault first we will see a fault is like this this is a fault this is such type of a structure is called fault if in this uh, a part is uh, upside this is called a hanging wall there is this surface this surface move with respect to this there are different types of fault that we will see in the next slide but uh, in between these two structures there is a relative movement and this movement occurring is called fault slip the rate of this movement may be little as a few inches or so per year that we can say that this movement is not very immediate or uh, it takes place in a day or a week it takes years as it is a very slow if the motion along the fault is accompanied by gradual build up of elastic energy within the rock along the fault we can say if this is a surface then uh, when this surface slips down in this direction and this surface tries to go up then the rocks which are located at the boundaries of the surface will will be subjected to strain and if these rocks are highly ductile they will absorb the strain and build up elastic strain energy and uh, they can rebound back to their shape but if these rocks are not elastic then the slip may occur that is a what we say fault a fault slip and uh, this is what it is explained that the rock stores this strain energy like a giant spring being slowly tightened eventually the strain along the fault exceeds the limit that means when this rocks the limit of their uh, absorbing or resisting the strain exceeds at that point and any additional strain if it applied then the fault ruptures that means the fault fails suddenly 
and moves in a large distance in small time that is that might be some meters some meters or might be also some kilometers of distance it moves suddenly and due to this sudden movement the seismic waves are generated which leads to an earthquake this rock masses from two sides of the fault and they snap back into a new position means that it after after uh, slipping it uh, doesn't go on slipping it stops at some point and that is the snapping option that is that is the snapping they snap back into the new position and the release of the strain energy is uh, formed it is somewhat like a rubber we can take an example of a rubber band if we elongate a rubber band from two of our fingers and then we if we set off the rubber band from one of finger then it will get again reformed to its original shape this is something what like we say elastic rebound theory next is characteristics of earthquake the characteristics of earthquake means what the magnitude of earthquake how the magn how the earthquake timing will be there and up to how much distance it will produce it will affect that is characteristics of earthquake first is the stress drop during the sleep that is when the sleep occurs the stress that takes place that is the stress drop during the sleep then the total fault displacement if we draw the same diagram here this is the fault one this is one and this one is there if this faults which is moving in this direction moves and this fault moves in this direction if this fault is related to this if this is we suppose as fault 1 and this is fault 2 this is what we say hanging wall this is surface of fault if this surface moves at a high distance or displacement as compared to this then the seismic wave generated or the earthquake generated is of high magnitude then this is the size of the slip area this is the area where the slip occurs if the size of this area is large then the earthquake occurring will be of high magnitude and the characteristic and type of earthquake also depends on this the size of slip area next comes the roughness of the slipping area this is this is the surface on which these two these two surfaces are the inner surfaces of the fault plane if this surface is smooth then the slipping action will easily takes place in the slipping action due to which the earthquake may be, may be easily generated but if the surface is a rough surface if you imagine then the friction will take place and it will forward the slipping of the two surfaces which will not generate at that much high intensity of uh, magnitude of uh, earthquake then is the fault shape that is a normal fault a reverse fault or strike fault this one is normal fault then these other two are the types of fault the type of earthquake also depends or the magnitude of earthquake depends upon the type of fault and shape of fault then it is the proximity of the slip area to the ground area and last one is the soil condition soil condition how the soil condition determines the earthquake that is uh, if this is suppose a uh, soil which is not a uh, granular soil or a soil which is having less bearing capacity then it will store less strain and it get deformed easily which leads to the slipping of the surface and if it is a and if it is a granular soil having more bearing capacity then it will not get uh, easily deformed or uh, easily does not get fail so the chances of earthquake or the magnitude of earthquake form will be less in this way these are the characteristic of earthquake thank you